Welcome to Q to Q, the number one quarterback podcast hosted by me, Josh Coleman. Welcome to another episode of Q2Q. Man, it's been a minute. It's been about a month since I've done the episode, but today I got some heat. Today I got one of the top 2021 quarterbacks in California. John Muir quarterback, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Jack Clarity. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Living good. That's pretty good, man. How you been doing, man? We know we still kind of in quarantine. California still in lockdown, but tell everybody how you've been, you know, cooperating and how you've been getting down lately. Yeah, so in California, we're doing online school right now, so I mean, Every day after school, we're either going to a speed workout, quarterback training, but mostly right now I'm working on my speed right now, which is good. So we got the time during quarantine, which is great. That's pretty good, man. Now, man, let's 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 pretty much get into it, man. Talk to everybody about you know what what brought you to being a quarterback, man. Where did it all start, and what what motivates you to keep on going? So uh, I didn't start playing quarterback until seventh grade flag football. So I didn't start playing tackle till eighth grade. So uh, in seventh grade, I think it was sixth grade, Johnny Manziel was like my guy to watch Texas A&M. So I used to watch him all the time. And I used to like flag football, you know, how quarterbacks can run around. I used to always try to like model that. So uh, uh, he was one of the reasons why I chose to play quarterback. And uh, my dad also played quarterback in high school, but he was a D starting DB. So he's second string quarterback, but you know, I, I just love the position. You could be a leader. You could lead the team. Um, you got to know everything. I mean, it's just the ball's in your hands every play, and I love that about it. Definitely. Now, I know Johnny Rizzo, that's probably one of – still one of my favorite quarterbacks of all time, you know, even though his NFL career didn't go as planned. But watching yeah. him in college, I was, I was about fourth, third grade, and just watching him be how big as he was at the time definitely influenced me. Like, I used to wear number two when I was yeah. about one or so. You know, him, I definitely feel the impact for sure by Johnny Rizzo. Exactly. No, he was good. He was great. Yeah. Now, you know, I know in high school you were at St. Francis. And, uh, you know, tell everybody about, you know, your time there, what you learned, and, you know, how, how you feel your time went there after school. You know, so at St. Francis, um, we had a good squad my junior year. We went 8-3, and three and we lost to Cajon in the first round of the playoffs. But, I mean, we had some top guys like Bryson Reeves, Markel Wallace, some top receivers to throw to. So, at St. Francis, I had some good players. And uh, so – my junior year I started so my sophomore year I was on JV freshman year I was on freshman so this past season my junior year was like my main year so uh, I'm glad I got that season in. How do you feel your junior year went for yourself? Um, It went well I mean I threw for over 2,000 yards with about 30 touchdowns I mean I had good receivers around me a great O-line so they were blocking well for me and just helping me out which was good. You know, St. Francis, you guys play Cathedral a lot, play a lot of good teams. So tell me about what your most memorable moment may have been from your junior year. Uh, Probably one of my most memorable moments was uh, winning league because it was was really strange because we uh, lost to Crespi the first week of league, and then Crespi ended up losing to Cathedral. So if Cathedral would have beat us, they would have won league straight out. But since we beat Cathedral week 10, Cathedral actually – uh, we all tied for first place in league, so it was a three-way tie. So I'll always remember that. And I mean, beating Cathedral on, at your home field is always a good feeling. So tying for first place, but we didn't get the luck. We got second out of the three teams, I think. So, but I mean, it was still a good moment. That's pretty good. Now, you know, like I said, like we're talking about the game, man. You just transferred. Now, have you been able to go on campus at all? 
Uh, I was at Mears campus for about six weeks, I want to say, until everything got shut down. So, yeah. I mean, I've, I've been there, so it was good. Yeah, I love my time there so far. That was the same for me when I, you know, I transferred to Dorsey. I was on campus for about four weeks before everything. Yeah, exactly. Down, so. It was like, it felt quick. I felt like I was barely there for a week. Yeah, but how do you think your transition went, you know, from those six weeks, man? Tell everybody about your time there, you know, while you're on campus and, you know, the environment. Yeah. What, what do you love about the school? Um, so my first day stepping on Mears campus, um, I mean, everyone was welcoming. Kaylin, Jameer, all those guys I played uh, Pop, Warmer, Pop Warner with. So all those guys I knew um, going into the school, I knew I was going to be there with them. So, I mean, we all knew each other. But uh, my first sport I played at Mears was baseball. And the first couple of days – uh, I was playing baseball. I mean, Adonis Harrison at Mir, good baseball coach. And then uh, the ability that Mir lets me play two sports and be a dual athlete is amazing. I mean, I could go from baseball practice to football lifting back to baseball practice, which was pretty cool. Um, they just gave me a good opportunity to uh, also play baseball while maintaining like football recruiting, lifting, practice, all that good stuff. That's, that's pretty cool. Now, you know, they, our season has been postponed, you know, yeah. to the spring. So how do you, you know, you being a dual sport athlete, how do you, have you thought about how that will conflict or what are you going to do for the, for the season? Um, so what I was talking to Brian Reed Biotto, a sports reporter for 210 Sports, and he was basically telling me that football should be ending for the CIF championship. Um, I forgot the date, but it's like two weeks before the baseball season starts. Mm -hmm. So I'll be able to play both this year again, which will be awesome kind of like right on each other but I mean it's still you get to play both sports which is good I mean you probably uh, you know talking to you you probably wouldn't even mind you know the season probably you know if you get to the championship and then going to baseball you probably wouldn't mind just be like man just go out here and have fun even though it'd be so yeah. close you probably exactly. just be like man I'm a senior you know I really want to do this so I feel like yeah. you know a lot of us like you know you have basketball and you have football a lot of the kids are probably going to not want to choose in between one they yeah. probably want to do too, which is something that, you know, I hope CIF and them have figured out. Um, exactly. No, I would. That. It's crazy. Yeah. It's definitely a crazy time right now for sure. Um, yeah. I don't know. But, you know, Todd, and I know you've been working with Coach Danny, man, one of the top quarterback coaches out, man. That's my guy. And talk to me about how he's been, you know, helping you, you know, elevate your game during this time and, you know, what you guys talk about, what you guys work on and, and et cetera. Uh, he's been helping me a lot with recruiting, which is great. And then uh, through this pandemic, I mean, everything that uh, has been going on, it's like coaches can't come see you throw live. So lately he's been miking us up. He gets us on a mic, videos, which is good. So, I mean, every Sunday, usually down in Laverne, and we just get some videos in, post stuff on Twitter, which is great. And, you know, it's just – I think it's really smart to do because you can't throw in front of coaches. You can't go to camps or anything. So, I mean, the fact that we're getting videos, posting it on Twitter is great. Definitely. And you talking about him helping you with your recruiting, man. You know, everybody just see you pick up your, your first O, man, from Valpo, man. Congratulations yep. on that. Appreciate it. Thank man. you. And, but just, you know, talk to me about how the recruiting process has been going for you, man, and, you know, all the ups and downs and, you know, how that feeling was, you know, getting that first O. I mean, getting that first offer was great. I mean, when Coach uh, RJ from Valpo called me, it was, I was, like, shocked when he first told me I was getting a scholarship. I was like, that's awesome. But uh, going into the offer – you know, everything was been, has been going slow through the transfer and everything. So, I mean, just having him there to call me was great. But as of now, I got a couple of schools on the Central, a um, couple on the East Coast, and a lot on the West Coast, which is good. So hopefully it picks up soon. But, I mean, I'm just grateful for that Valpo offer to help me. But um, as of right now, it's starting to pick up. I mean, the video I just posted on Twitter, too, has helped a lot. Um, just getting my name out there and stuff, which is great. Now, it's pretty, now, you know, you being a senior and me, you know, pretty, I'm a junior now. So what is some advice you would give to, you know, guys like myself and, and a lot of other dudes who are on the rise, on the horizon of, you know, probably picking up their first offer or, you know, probably don't even have any looks yet. What is some advice that you would give, you know, to a lot of the, you know, up and coming dudes? Um, just stay, stay. For me, uh, I realized going into this recruiting process that my GPA was very important. And that most of these schools, they can give also more scholarship money on grades too. So I've realized that my grades are like really important. But besides grades, it's like you just got to stay on your grind, throwing the ball if you're a quarterback, running your routes if you're a receiver, and then just staying on your speed work, footwork, all that good stuff. Just make sure you're uh, 
you're ready for Friday Night Lights. That's all that matters. Mm. Now, you know, you're, in, your, in your high school career, you probably played a lot of, you know, a lot of top quarterbacks, a lot of top, you know, top dudes. Who was probably your favorite quarterback that you probably played against, you know, while you were at St. Francis? Um, I would say Saugus is Colton Fitzgerald. Mm. Um, him and I played against each other, JV, and we had a good matchup. Um, I think he beat me JV year, like 35-21. So playing him on varsity, him and I were texting about it, talking smack, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, this year, uh, I think we beat them twenty-eight to twenty or twenty-eight fourteen, something like that. So him and I are tight, and that was fun to play against him. We both we both did great that game, so that was good. He's nice. I've been yeah, seeing no, him on Twitter. I've been he can yeah. sling it. Yeah, he just got a Heidelberg offer the other day, so he's. Mm. I'm definitely he, I'm definitely having him on my radar for sure to get him on the show. I, I like him a lot. Yeah. I watch him. Now, who would you say is, you know, some of the some of the top guys that you may work out with, you know, with Coach Daniel on your own time, you know, receivers, quarterbacks, whoever, but some of the top guys that you, you know, enjoy working out with to have a pretty strong bond with? Uh, I mean, Jake Garcia, I worked out with him a couple times. He's a good guy. Uh, Tyler Buckner, Miller Moss, they're all good guys. I mean, even Colton, Walker, Eggett, there's just a bunch of good quarterbacks out there. I mean, there's not been one quarterback where I don't get along with at a work, workout. I mean, everyone just goes out there and wants to get better. And it's just good to be around people like that who want who have like the same goal in mind as you, you know. And I would say who was probably a receiver, um, you know, that you probably thrown to him and known the strong bond that you was like, you know, this dude's legit. Um, back at St. Francis, Bryson Reeves. Mm-hmm. I think as of now he's got like twenty one offers. So he's him and I have always had a good connection since freshman year. I was always throwing like swings and wheels to him out of the backfield thing, especially going into my junior year. At him now at receiver, we just built a connection. We still throw to this day, get workouts in, which is great. That's pretty good, man. Now let's pretty much, you know, wrap it up, man. What are some of your goals, you know, for, you know, this season, man? Praying that we have one, but what are some of your goals that you want to accomplish, you know, something that, you know, you've been waiting for, you know, senior year, man, you got to go out with a bang. So what's some of the stuff that you want to accomplish, you know, for the team? And then, you know, maybe if you have any personal goals that you want to share with everyone. Yeah, uh, this year for sure at Mir, we have no expectation to uh, – our only expectation is to win CIF this year. I mean, we want to win league, obviously, but CIF is our main goal. As a team, we've been working out, doing speed work. All the guys are doing their own stuff, which is great. Everyone wants to win. So uh, for, for Mir as a team, we just – we're focused on CIF right now. We want to get the <clears> – <throat> we want to get that ring. And uh, as far as league goes, I mean, we got to – this year, our team goal would be beat CV in the championship. And then, obviously, we got to beat PHS for the Pasadena rivalry. But uh, as a personal goal this year, I've been working on more. I'm trying to get quicker and faster, so I've been working on my speed a lot more, which is good. And, uh, yes, as far as that goes, just still training on my quarterback, trying to get better every day. Man, that's dope, man. I'm, thank you for hopping on the show, man. One of the top 2021 quarterbacks I heard, Jack Clardy, man. Thank you for getting on the call. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Take care. No doubt. We'll keep in touch.